Restaurantbistro.com. Freshly prepared, home delivered, restaurant quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world class chefs and delivered frozen, ready to eat within minutes and no commit. Welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery specialized in affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from homebistro.com? Restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce. The charbroiled chicken romesco. Or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with HomeBistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with HomeBistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. BetDaily.com. That's right, the WhoBetDaily.com. Your one-stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, even the top flight boxing. So if you're a Who That, you're looking for a place to stay up on your team. WhoBetDaily.com is your site. The WhoBetDaily.com for the sport Who That in all of us. Man, we in this thing. Sports coma is going down. Big ups to the great Saint Thank Tank. Big ups to the fam. Thank y'all for joining me for a Monday edition of the Sports Coma. TSC Saints Inc. Wide receiver Chris Hogan and more news, baby. Listen, I'm gonna try not to hold you guys too <laughs> too long on this one. Been a busy news day, man. In terms of the Saints, the Pelicans got something going on. We got something for you laid on to the night, Pelican faithful, for the flock. So if you're a Pelican person, go on over to the Pelican Post Game Report. We'll be covering a potential trade that's going on with your New Orleans Pelicans. We'll cover that on that side of stuff. But anyway, on to the Saints stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys, where we have intense entertaining educating and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family i'm big q chiming in and you're the, the black and gold nation the who that nation the great saint tank tank is in the building what's happening fam big ups to the family please strike upon the like button hit that like button and show your boys some love also subscribe if you aren't a subscriber and join the who that nation the black and gold nation the great saint tank tank appreciate y'all man much love to the fam was good with it all right fam so i'm gonna start off like i always do and give much love to the family members chiming in jt who that tell you jerry poor jr who that tell you brian pearson who that tell you tim dunn who that tell you gm kev who that tell you darrell freeman who that tell you uh rose city william dickerson who that tell you uh tim dunn who that tell you uh let's see who else we got what's up jacob Jacob, who that tell you, fam, appreciate you as well. Superstar Louisiana boy, who that tell you. 
Uh, Tory Shepard Sr., who that tell you? Uh, who else we got chiming in on this thing? Uh, Gabriel Thomas, who that tell you? Katie Davis, who that tell you? Pelicans Nola, who that tell you? Big ups, Pelicans Nola. Dr. Key, who that tell you? Dr. Key, how you doing, my friend? Brewman91, what's up, Brewman? Who that tell you? Be kind, who that tell you as well? J Rock, who that tell you? Uh, let's see what we got chiming in. Brother Donovan Grayson, who that tell you? Ja Williams in the building, who that tell you? Rugaru, who that tell you? Uh, who else we got, man? We're going, we going down the line, fam. If you ain't hear your name, drop in there, man, and get it and get it going. Get it on. All right, big ups to the rest of the fam. Joe Wiley, who that tell you? What's up, Joe? Uh, big ups to uh, Tedra. T Tedra's in the building as well. Much love, fam. Appreciate you. Big Jedediah's in the building. What's up, fam? Much love to you. Simply Tasha. What's up, Tasha, baby? Big ups to you and my dog, Big Sean, as well. Much love to the fam. Marco, what's up, Marco? Watson in the building. What's up, Marco? Zendel Moore is in the building. Who that tell you? Kiyoki Phillips is in the building. Who that tell you? Brother Doug is in the building. Who that tell you? Much love. Kai the Great is in the building. Who that tell you as well? Much love to the entire family members. Last Saint Brother Tyrese is in the building. Who that tell you? Teal. My dog Teal is in the building. What's up, Teal? All right. Colonnade is in the building. Who that tell you? Big ups to the entire great Saint Tank Tank. We in this thing. Much love to the fam. If you didn't hear your name, give me a who that, and I'll give you a who that back, baby. Much love to you. Now, fam, in this one, fam, bottom line, we got this going on. We got signings of epic proportions. <laughs> not so much. Not exactly what you wanted, huh? Didn't I warn you about that genie? About that evil genie? <laughs> <laughs> what's up fam uh but i warned y'all about that genie didn't i didn't i tell you well q we're gonna need a veteran wide receiver and then he go to the to the genie and say genie we want a veteran wide receiver genie we want a car a veteran cornerback and that genie says your wish is my command <laughs> and wha bam <laughs> you got chris hogan you got <laughs> Oh, my goodness, fam. I'm loving it because let's see how it go. Big ups to the fam, man. I appreciate y'all so much for being in with this one. What's up, Ramsey? Who that to you? Ramsey, much love to you as well, fam. Appreciate you chiming in with this one. <laughs> I warned you about that evil genie. Let me tell you something. When you order something from the genie, you got to be specific as hell. Don't come up here talking about Q. We need a veteran wide receiver. Because hey, what that gene do? Well, bam. I mean, what do you got? <laughs> anyway, fam, listen. We're going to cover this one, man. This one called uh, Saints Inc. Wide Receiver Chris Hogan and more. And, that, and I opened up with a bit of levity with that because that's pretty much what the show's basically about. About you asking that genie for shit and him turning around spinning it on you. <laughs> this is not what I asked for at all. Oh, of course not. You got to be specific. But anyway, we're going to get into it. We got a few things we're going to cover. So, please, what's up, Delcom? Who that to you, fam? Appreciate you. What's happening, fam? Good to see you in the chat. Been a while since I've seen you. Much love to you, Delcom. Hit the like button, fam. We about to get going up in here. We got over 60 of the family members chiming in on this thing. So, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and share those links with other faithful, other saints faithful as well that helps out the platform. So, without further ado, give me a second, fam. I'm going to set it up, and we're going to get it going. <laughs> Baby, we're going to get it going. Who that to you? Uncle Paul is in the building as well. Uncle Paul is in the building. What's up, Uncle Paulie? All right, so fam, we're going to start it off like this. Saint sign. <laughs> he just as surprised as I am. Man, they signed me. What? I was playing lacrosse. But anyway, what's up, Tragic? What's up, Brother Derek? Who that to you, fam? Appreciate y'all being in here, man. Much love. And this is who you got. You, you asked for a veteran wide receiver. Well, we got one. Chris Hogan is on the team, man. Well, at least for right now anyway. So let's get into it and learn a little bit more about Mr. Hogan. And this is coming from uh, NOLA.com as Amy's on the, on the scoop. Saints are signing veteran wide receiver Chris Hogan after he worked out with the team, according to a report by Mike Gar Garofalo of the NFL Network. Hogan, who has played in 100 NFL games and has 2,795 career yards 
and 216 receptions. He most recently played for the Jets. What is the Saints theme of picking up Jet free agents? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The last couple of people, well, I ain't mad about, well, we did pick up Demario Davis, my bad. Demario Davis. But we also got Ty Montgomery. And the last two veteran signings, it was uh, with Brian Poole, who was with the Jets last. And now this guy, Chris Hogan, who was the Jets last. Huh? I don't know if it's a commonality, but it is two things back to back. John Thompson, who would that tell you? So with that being said, Hogan, who's played in the NFL, played in 100 NFL games. As you can see that he most recently played for the Jets, but he also spent time with the Bills, the Patriots and the Panthers. Hogan signing comes days after news broke that Saints all pro receiver Michael Thomas will likely miss the start of the season after having ankle surgery in June. Hogan did not appear on Monday's transaction list, so the signing will be uh, official later this week. Now, with Hogan in the fold, the Saints receiving course features, uh, well, Thomas is not there, but Traquan Smith, Deontay Harris, Marquez Galloway, LaJordan Humphrey, Jake Lampman, Jalen McCleskey, and rookie draft pick Quine Baker. And don't forget about undrafted Rookie wide receiver Aesop Winston Jr. Now Jawan Johnson is 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 listed as a wide receiver, but he's more like a tight end now. He's going to be switching over to that tight end position. What's up, Trail? Who that tell you? What's up, Clap Savage? How you feel, fam? See how you feel about the Brian Poole signing? I'm okay with it, bro. I mean, the guy's a slot a slot cornerback for the most part, bro. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we're gonna cover a little bit more in that in the show. So appreciate you being here. Please feel free to hit the like button. Family, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you. All right, uh, let's keep it moving, fam. Hogan, who's six foot one, he's 210 pounds, played in four games for the Jets last year, reeling in 14 catches for 118 yards before he was placed on injury reserve in mid-October with a high ankle sprain. So uh, he had what Mike had. So, I mean, let's see. Health doesn't seem to be an issue, though, for Hogan, considering he spent the offseason playing in the Premier Lacrosse League. Hogan played lacrosse at Penn State for three years before transferring uh, to Mama to play football in 2020. And that's pretty tough ass sport. So that speaks to the toughness of Chris Hogan. If anything, he out there running around playing, well, well, you know, playing l lacrosse, man. That's pretty, that's pretty tough sport, man. But anyway, uh, Hoya Booster says Poole is a nice sign, and though he still is a, slot, a, slot, a solid slot cornerback and has been coached up, he'll help the team stay healthy. Okay, thank you, Hoya Booster. Appreciate you. Dropping that science. And I, that's what I, the man is just basically a, a slot cornerback. But Hogan is the guy we were looking for a more high profile signing. You know, of course, you heard Ramblings, you heard Ocho Cinco said he'll play for what, a company car and a place to stay. <laughs> Boy, how the mighty have fallen. But Saints signed this guy. What do you think about this great Saint Think Tank? Are you guys happy that we have Chris Hogan? Although I thought there are other people involved. I know. Um, D.D. Westbrook signed with the Vikings so that kind of took him out of play I don't know if he was really a guy that the Saints was looking at Golden Tate was not one because of the he was pretty expensive but you did have other guys on those lists as well that the spreading list that would be intriguing but the Saints with five spots left decided to go with Chris Hogan I'm, I'm opposed to Crescent to the great Saint Thank Tank because it's not really a, a big signing. If you lose Mike Thomas, I'm looking for you to bring in a veteran impact player. It, it's Chris Hogan never through his entire career. He's mostly been just a reserve uh, backup wide receiver. He was never an impact player, which speaks to the fact how Coach Payton feels about the wide receiver room. And we've been saying that for a while, and, and I've been saying that for a, lot, a while, that Coach Payton is very high on his wide receiver room. That's why you don't see a, a larger named player besides a Chris Hogan coming in here. Because Chris Hogan pretty much reminds me of a, like a, a, a more physical version of Keith Poole. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember Keith Poole used to play wide receiver for the Saints? A more physical version of him. He's not a speed guy. He's a possession guy. Has pretty good hands, man. And he blocks pretty decently. Is an effort guy, but mostly a backup guy for the summation of his career. You know, he was a journeyman, moved around a lot, never could find a, a place to a home, per se, in the NFL. But the Saints, that's why I've been saying, telling the family members, the Saints are very high on their on their wide receiver room. That's why we don't see a lot of these guys uh, or, or a bigger name guy on the free agents list or even a, like uh, uh, trading for a 
higher draft pick guy like a uh, Nkill Harry or somebody like that. The team said, nah, we good with Hogan. And you throw Hogan in there. But really, truthfully, I was thinking in my head it might have been uh, Austin Carr again. <laughs> I thought it had been Austin Carr again. The Saints signed Austin Carr back to the team. Or why the hell not? You know, that fit the theme with PJ and the rest of them. But Chris Hogan is the man, man. Do we foresee? Now, the question is, and asking the great Saint Think Tank, obviously to me, Hogan is not a starter. He'll be a guy that comes in and helps in terms of provide depth for the wide receiver room. He was the type of signing that I anticipated early on when people asked me, Q, we don't go after this guy. I was telling you, nah, I think the Saints are high or signed. But when you lose Mike Thomas, that would kind of make you think, that, hey, man, we need to go out and get somebody that can have an impact. I don't see Chris Hogan as an impact wide receiver. I see him as a as a wide receiver depth uh, piece to help with the wide receiver group veteran-wise. I don't see him as a guy that's uh, that's going to come in and make a serious impact as a starting wide receiver or something like that. That's just my, my, my thought process on it. I'm going to leave it up to the great Saint Think Tank. What do you guys think? Where do you think Chris Hogan as a wide receiver in the Saints wide receiver room fit? Do you think he's a second, third, fourth? What, I mean, where do you think he fits in that group? But it also brings the awareness that Coach Payton is really high on his uh, wide receiver room, even with Mike Thomas not there. He's very high on that wide receiver group. A lot of confidence he has in that wide receiver group to not go out and get an impact wide receiver. No disrespect to Chris Hogan, but I don't classify him as an impact wide receiver. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know. Put it in the chat. GRE504, who that to your fan? Appreciate you being here. Oh, Cooler. What's up, old Cooler? Much love to your fan. Appreciate you. Slim South 504, what's happening, fam? Much love to you. Appreciate you stopping by as well. All right, so with that being said, man, uh, very interesting move here. So y'all drop it in the chat, fam. Y'all let me know how you feel about that. All right, let's move on. Now, remember, let's continue the theme. And most of the family members probably not go. What's up, Kevin? Who that to you, Kevin Johnson? Much love, fam. Appreciate you being here. Now, a, a lot of, of uh, remember that, that genie theme that I opened the broadcast up about being careful when you open the bottle and then the damn genie comes out the bottle and he actually gives you three wishes. And if you're not specific with your wishes, you're probably going to end up getting screwed over. Well, we asked for a few things and we asked for a, when Mike went down, maybe an impact wide receiver, right? Well, you got Chris Hogan. We asked for some help at the linebacker position. And do we look at, is Quan Alexander the man? Well, room word on the street is other teams are looking at Quan Alexander. And that wouldn't be so bad. But what do you think about this? Remember that evil genie? Bam! St. Sign linebacker Kendall Donerson. Who? <laughs> Who? The St. Sign a linebacker. That's right. It ain't Quan Alexander. It's a guy named Kendall Donerson. And y'all know y'all been watching this show long enough to know any time a reporter write an article about a player and he put a damn helmet up there. <laughs> Great value city. That's what we that's what we talking about. It's not you. It's not. I'm sorry, family to report this, but it's not Quan Alexander. It's Kendall Donaldson. So let, how y'all feel about that? Some of y'all probably didn't know that. But for those who didn't know. <laughs> who? Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madge Prime, brother Madge Prime. Blue five, brother Madge Prime's in the build of prediction. He says, until Thomas come back, our tight ends will see major action. Winston loved the tight ends. Thank you, brother Prime. Appreciate your super chat, my friend. Much love to you as well. Thank you. Also, thank you, brother Donovan, for the super chat. He says, I'm not sure he makes the 53-man roster, camp body, and possibly a depth player at best. Thank you, brother Donovan. Appreciate the commentary, my friend, and also the super chat. So big ups to brother Madge Prime and brother Donovan super chat. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you all this. What's up, Larry? Big ups to you. All right, but that I, I know, fam. But don't be too upset because <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, he sounded like Samuel Jackson from Coming to America the first one. <laughs> when he was holding up the, the uh, McDowell's. Remember Samuel Jackson came in the McDowell's to hold it up and then he was telling them to get the money out of there and then he was telling them, then the guy, the semi steps up, not semi, uh, Eddie Murphy steps up 
to him and tells him, you must refrain from cussing or I shall be forced to thrash you. Remember what Samuel Jackson said? That's exactly what Jerry said. <laughs> goodness i'm sorry family but it's not your guy i told then i warned y'all i warned y'all i warned y'all about that evil genie you gotta you got to you got to ask specifically what you want teal says greed q coach payton had a lot of confidence in the wide receiver room i think donerson would be used as a defensive end e edge rusher thank you teal appreciate you brother all right <laughs> what's up eternal who that to your fam appreciate you being in the building as well much love fam appreciate you all right, what's up, Kenny? Who that tell you? Kenny Sutton and the rest of the family members as well. Brother Larry Williams and the rest, man. Much love to you guys. Preach. What's up, Brother Donald? Donald McKenzie, he said, I like to give a, a number one. Just, okay, I got you. D Granger, what's up, fam? He said, Hogan's on his lunch break <laughs> at Sam's Club and he got called off. I got you, bro. <laughs> but let's get into it, fam. I, 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 I warned y'all, man. I warned y'all about that evil genie. You got Chris Hogan. In place of Michael Thomas now, right? Mike goes down. What happens? You end up getting uh, Chris Hogan. Quine Alexander, you need a veteran linebacker. You get Kendall Donaldson, which this people, Luke is the writer of this article. Luke can't even find a, a damn picture to go with, with Donaldson so you can see what he looked like. But anytime you see a generic helmet sitting on the field and they name the player, great value. That's what that means. Thank you. What's up, Brandon? Big ups to you. All right, let's go into you. Luke Johnson, New Orleans Saints, added a young player to their linebacker core Monday, signing linebacker Kendall Donaldson, according to league source. Donaldson was the seventh-round selection of the Green Bay Packers in 2018, spent his rookie season there on the practice squad. He has since taken a winding road to New Orleans, spending time with the Raiders, the Bengals, practice squads, and most recently with the Panthers this summer. Donaldson was a standout defensive edge rusher at Southeast Missouri State recording 26 and a half tackles for loss and 10 sacks in his final two seasons. So five sacks per season. He has not yet appeared in a professional football game, mostly a practice squad player mentioned there as well. So Kendall Donaldson, man, not a lot of information. We don't even, ain't even mention how tall the guy is. So let's pull up Kendall Donaldson right quick. This is what he looks like. This is the brother Kendall Donaldson right here. He's 6'3", 247 pounds. Uh, let's see what else it is. 25 years old. And, it, and of course, they're showing you that he would, he had time with the Panthers. So 25 year old, he's 6'3", 247, linebacker, tweener type. So just to get a black and gold, a little insight on the man, because you, you at least want to know what the hell he looked like. Right. We don't know what the hell the man looked like. Right. There you go. All right. That, so that's him right there. That's that's who you got on your squad now. Mr. Kendall Donaldson. All right. So this is the man you got. It ain't Quan Alexander, man. A lot. <laughs> that don't necessarily mean it won't be him. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Marty? Who that tell you? But it is what it is right now, fam. You know, the things to do to surprise you, man. That's all I got to say about it. All right, let's move on to the next one. And we talked about this on the uh, the Sunday stream real quick. We just, just touched upon it. What's up, James? Big ups to you. All right. <laughs> I know, fam. All right, so with that being said, let's get into this one right here. Saints, uh, they to sign Poo, adding uh, depth to the secondary. It's by Luke Johnson. Uh, the Saints have reportedly reached an agreement with veteran cornerback Brian Poole and expected to sign him pending the results of a physical. The 28-year-old Poole last played for the Jets, recording three interceptions, 12 passes defense, uh, defended in 25 games over the course of two seasons with the, the, the Jets. He began his career with the Falcons, making the team as an undrafted free agent out of the University of Florida before carving out a regular role. In three seasons with the Falcons, Poole started 21 to 47 games in which he played, intercepting four passes while recording five sacks. Poole has been at his best while playing as a slot defender, according to Pro Football Focus. Poole played nearly 80% of his defensive snaps in the slot last season, along with just 64.7% uh, passer rating when targeted. A shoulder injury limited Poole to just nine games in 2020. And while Poole has not historically played on the boundary where the Saints currently need the most help in the secondary, he does provide additional depth to a unit that has lost that lost last season starting cornerback Janaris Jenkins in the cap saver maneuver this offseason. Now, before I finish the article, 
What's interesting is this. We instead, of, what's up, Jarvis? Who that to you, fam? What's up, Todd? Big ups to the fam, man. Appreciate y'all brothers being here. Much love. What's up, big dog daughters in the building? What's up, fam? Much love to you, bro. Chief Peanut, what's up, fam? Appreciate you. Much love to all of the Sports Coma Queens as well in the building. Give a shout out to all the Sports Coma Queens. The ladies are in full effect. Much love to the ladies as well. All right, so what's interesting is you got Poole. That Poole is known as a slot guy. He, that's pretty much what he does. So what is the thought process? Let me kind of share this with, what's up, pick it and flick it? What's up, fam? Let me share this with the great saying thing tank. Y'all, let me pick your brains for a second. What do you guys think about this? You get, uh, is, it, is Paulson a Debo there? But you have Poole there. Poole is not a boundary guy. I've been watching some footage of Poole. He's not a boundary guy. He's a slot man. So if the, the Saints had an opportunity to look out and go and get a boundary guy to help out at that position. Now, is this, let, let me ask you guys this. I'm just picking your brains and you tell, let me know how you feel. What's up, Kevin? Who that tell you? Kevin McKnight, who that? Lamar, who that tell you? So let me, let me ask this. Do you guys think that this is a maneuver to kind of reinforce Paulson Adebo as the number two cornerback? Or do you suspect this could be a maneuver to kind of let Chauncey Gardner Johnson play the two slot just in the interim if something was to happen uh, to add it at it? What do you guys think about that? Or is Chauncey in play for the second position? I say no because Dennis Allen loves him there. But because of the shuffling in the secondary, what do you guys think? Y'all fill me and let me know. What's up, Baron? Big ups to you, fam. Appreciate you being here. Bobby Walker, who that to you, Bobby? Much love, fam. Appreciate you being here. Please hit the like button, family. All right, so I'm going to throw that out to the great Saint Thank Tank. Very interesting there. You go and get not a boundary corner, but not saying that Poole can't play the boundary. We got Coach Richard there. Perhaps just because he never played it, he was mostly a slot guy. Perhaps, you know, he got Coach Richard and he gets there. Maybe he does it or not, but he's known as a slot guy. So what do you guys think? Is this more of a play for Debo or more of a play for Chauncey Gardner at that position? Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. All right. All right. Let me finish this up. Okay. So uh, Marshawn Lattimore will lock down one starting spot, but it remains to be seen who will emerge as the front runner to occupy the other boundary Saints uh, uh, defensive spot. So what's interesting is also to throw this in there too, fam. Uh, what's up, KT? Big ups to my dog, KT. What's interesting as well when you're dealing with the cornerback position is like the, the Saints are really high on Paulson Adebo. They really are. They're really big on Adebo. And I'm saying, okay, you know, why not go and get a, a, a guy that has a depth of experience playing on the boundary to match up with, with Paulson Adebo as opposed to a guy that's just a slot man? I don't, I don't see why you would do that unless you figure you're going to teach him to play the boundary or Chauncey plays there, or Paulson Adebo plays there. It's, it's, I don't know. It's somewhere in between. But you guys, let me know how you feel. I'm gonna read it on after I finish going through this article. What's up, brother Kendall? Uh, much love to your fam. Appreciate you being here as well, man. What's up, uh, in the fam? Rest of the fam. Appreciate y'all, man. All right, so let's keep it rolling here. In addition to pool, the Saints bring back veteran Patrick Robinson, who I think might be in trouble. P and PJ Williams, both of whom have experience on the outside, but have mostly played inside in recent season. Well, we know Patrick Robinson cannot play the boundary position. He just doesn't have the athleticism anymore to keep up with some of those guys. P.J. Williams is, is not a very good cover guy at all. That's why they moved him to safety, to kind of cover up his coverage lapses. You know, not saying that these guys can't get better under Coach Richard's system, but that's a lot of bad habits to shake. But we'll see. Uh, so keep Washington and Grant. Grapel Grant Haley returned after spending last season mostly on the practice squad. Haley appeared in the Week 17 matchup against Carolina, recorded an interception. And, boy, he was getting cooked before then, but he got that interception, everything turned around. And rookies Paulson Adebo, Bryce Thompson, Lawrence Woods will also compete for playing time. Now, the Saints could still sign more help in the secondary before training camp starts with four open roster spots and roughly $11 million in cap space, according to NFLPA's public salary cap report. So that is very Interesting and very true. The Saints could still bring in another cornerback. That's a great point by Luke. Let family members know. But as far as currently constructed, we'll be saying ladder daddy on one side. You got a Debo. You got Poole in there. You got 
everybody else. Who, what, what does this, the secondary look like to the family members? Let me see if I can read some of these comments to some of the family members and what they thinking about uh, what's going on here with uh, Brian Poulos. The, la the latest three additional players added to the team doesn't really scream impact, although Brian Poole more so than others because he can actually come in and help. Because, it, it, but I don't. I just don't see what they're gonna do there. But let me look at and see what you guys think on that as well. Let's get the great Saint Thank Tank commentary in there. All right, uh, brother Kendall. All right, hi, Boosie. I think it would be nonsense to move CD away from a spot he excels in, even if it's temporary. No way, Rashad will do that to Chauncey. He's balling. Okay, thank you, hi, Boosie. Appreciate that. Uh, Teal, my dog Teal. Says uh, CD dude's been hinting at playing the corner blue position. I know that's why I threw that out there, Till. You know, but I've been like, okay, Dennis Allen loves him at that at that nickel position. But things are strange right now. You got Brian Poole, who's the slot guy. They ain't bringing a guy with boundary experience. They bring in a slot cornerback. So you know, temporary in the interim. Does that mean Chauncey moved there, or does it simply means that he's a a, a a backup option for, for Paulson and Debo to push. I just don't see the, the, you know, you get a guy that has experience playing on the boundary. You don't go and get a slot guy. That's Chauncey's position unless you intend to use him at the slot and move Chauncey into that position uh, until uh, a Debo comes along or, in, you know, or whatever. I, I don't know. It's kind of confusing right there. Uh, Todd says, uh, I'm more about a Debo being a number two. Okay, thank you there, fam. Appreciate you. All right, who else? Let me see what the rest of the family members got up there as well okay slim says sign another free agent cornerback okay thank you slim that that would be a good a good move which means that patrick robinson would be up out of here uh kt says chris hagan we signed milk toast poor man's dammy amadola seriously uh, i know kt i know uh bobby says uh chauncey Gordon johnson is a penalty machine waiting to happen at boundary at the boundary he doesn't have elite speed for elite technique to do that all right thank you bobby appreciate that fam Hi, okay, let me hold on here. Let me, it just jumped on me. All right, thank you for that. Hi, Boost said, if you move CD to the boundary, you ask it for issues, bring in another true boundary guy like Kurt Patrick. Thank you, uh, Hi, Boost. So, your guy in agreement uh, with that. Uh, Katie says, uh, CD Deuce plays outside cornerback in college. Thank you, uh, Katie. Appreciate you there. Bobby says, kill Patrick and pool if he survives camp and the Debo. All right, what's up, brother Matthew? Who that tell you? A BR fit at 225. Much love to you, fam. Appreciate you. Axon Jackson's in the building. What's up, fam? All right, he says, uh, he says, uh, Q uh, pool pick up makes us sense. Doesn't think we're finished. He said, don't think we're finished. What about Chauncey going to? I know I just said that, Action Jackson. You right on, uh, right on the, on the line with me, my brother. All right, appreciate your commentary, bro. All right, uh, Teal says, I think uh, cornerback two will be C.D. or Paulson. All right, thank you, Teal. Much love to you. Chef the Flavor, what's up, fam? Much love. Uh, Donald says, uh, Steve uh, Steven Nelson signed with the Eagles. Yeah, I know, bro. I, I, I said that a couple of shows ago. I said the Eagles were looking at him pretty hard, and they wanted to, you know, and they had a real interest, and the Eagles needed some help back there. And they got a pretty good damn cornerback, to be honest with you, with Steven Nelson, man. Uh, you know, so... You know, that that to me, that that hurt a little bit. And then, uh, 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 what's his name? Malik Hooker is is possibly, I think it was supposed to be a report that he's supposed to be signing with the Cowboys. So the Cowboys got Hooker and Eagles end up with uh, uh, end up with Nelson. So there you go. And then we end up with Poole and uh, Chris Hogan. All right. So, yeah. 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 Jarvis says we're going to we're going in the right direction. All right. Thank you, fam. Thank you, Jarvis. And the family members is there. Okay, Derek says, uh, the answer is yes, but nobody else had any luck with him. Okay, you must be talking about something. Paul said, hey, Q, uh, he says, them Hogan boys have not worked out for the Saints. Remember Creshawn Hogan? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember that. I remember that dude. I, re I remember that dude. I definitely remember that dude. I remember that damn dude. Yeah, but hopefully this guy is a uh, is a veteran cornerback. We we'll see how it all shakes. <laughs> all right, so let's move to the final. Uh, this one right here is it's official. The Superdome is has its new name, and of course they had some uh uh you know renderings to show you what the Superdome looked like, fam. Uh, with all of the the stuff going on, and if you hadn't seen it, this is what a 3D rendering of what the Superdome is actually going to look like. 
once they start when they start uh, you know making it due. So the money is is due seven million a year for the Saints, six point nine to be precise, over twenty years. The the name and rights money to put all this shit on the dome, your dome owned by you. Uh, you don't get one apricot, not one half a penny uh, from none of this. Seven million in the pockets of the people. Uh, this and you know how I feel about this because I think that's wrong to do that. If if we're gonna do it, it should, it should be done the right way. But this is how it's gonna look. This is a rendering of how the Caesars Superdome will look. It's all lit up like a Christmas tree. You see the lo Caesars logo on the side, and you see Caesar Superdome written right there on the roof. And then you go, and then you got the Caesar logo on the side. Then you go up top of there, and then they got it lit up like a Christmas tree with the Caesar on top of the roof. So you see that right there, and they're gonna have lights up there too, pointing at it. So there you go. And that is the rendition of what the Caesar Superdome is going to look like. All right. So they're going to get to work on that and get that all out the way and get that fixed on. So Caesar Superdome, fam, there you go. All right. All right. So to recap, we'll go to a Saints sign wide receiver Chris Hogan. Uh, after Mike Thomas was also put on the pup lift today, just to make sure, fam, uh, to make sure the family know. What's up, brother Arrow? Who that tell you, fam? He says, what about your boy, Keith Washington? Okay, Keith Washington. Uh, uh, what, what about him? What you mean, Arrow? Uh, you know, expound on your question, my brother. What about, do you think, he, you asked me, do he, do he make the team? Or, uh, you know, what, what you, what, expound on that, my friend. All right, uh, we recovered this one, you know, and of course, like I said, uh, uh, Mike was put on the what is the physically unable to perform list, the puppy list today, uh, and then of course the signing of Chris Hogan in there as well, and of course you got the not the signing of Quan Alexander, but also the signing of Kendall Donaldson. That's right, not the linebacker we were looking for, not the wide receiver we were looking for, but we end up with him nonetheless. So the Saints signed Kendall Donaldson for the family members who don't know. Saints signed a linebacker, and it wasn't Keith. I mean, wasn't uh, Quan Alexander? It was Donaldson, the former Packer, seven round draft pick onto the team to play at the linebacker position to help out with the depth. Very intriguing. Doesn't mean that they're not going to sign Quan Alexander, but they just added another perhaps practice squad player there, a depth piece to help out uh, going into the season. And this is uh, the man, this is Donaldson. They, they didn't even have a pitcher to put, they just put a damn helmet up there. So this is Donaldson right here with his time with the Packers, as you can see. Uh, and he's uh, with, let me see if I can go back to his profile. Let me see if I can go to his profile right here. As he is uh, 6'3", 247 pounds, 25-year-old. Uh, and like I said, this guy is mostly going to be a practice squad player, in my opinion, with the black and gold, man. I don't anticipate uh, him doing much. I mean, even though he had like, what, a 10 sacks in college? over the last two years. But this is uh, Kendall Donaldson, the Saints' newest player that they picked up. And like I said, one year of experience, never played in the actual game, mostly a practice squad player. But the Saints add this player to the roster today. All right. And then, of course, we talked about the signing of uh, boundary, I'm not boundary, but slot cornerback Brian Poole to the team. We'll see how it all shakes because camp coming soon. We'll see how those depth charts line up and what they look like. And who be playing? These questions be asked, asked real quick. To be honest with you, the signing a more in depth broke, breakdown. I know I covered it on the Saturday, Sunday show for a few minutes, but you know we talked about it more in depth today. And of course, the renderings of the new uh, Superdome Caesar Superdome, as you can see, I mean, not too bad, man. Not too bad. It's not an ugly situation, and we'll see, man. How family members will be driving by there and see it lit up like a Christmas tree no more Mercedes Benz it's now the Caesars Superdome as you can see the Caesars logo on one side and then they got it on top of the building the words written on top of the building and uh, they're going to light it up so there it is so with that being said you know we're going to bounce back to the regular screen and uh, just to let the family members know man a lot of stuff going on all right, uh, let's, okay, let's see it. James, what's up, James? He says, uh, we stretch cap-wise, player-wise, makes sense for Chauncey Gordon-Johnson to try 
the cornerback if we can use players in more than one spot. I know what DA like, but this is Rashard secondary. Chauncey Garden Johnson is a smart physic is smart physical. He will be successful. Thank you, brother James. Much love to you. Appreciate that. All right, Marty said, I think Adebo is going to be good, but I'm not sure if he will be any good this first season. All right, thank you, Marty. What's up, Michael? Who that Michael Rios? Much love, fam. Uncle Paul says, hey, Q, I like when it was the Louisiana New Orleans Superdome. I know. <laughs> what? They wasn't making no money. Like, well, they were making money. But when they found out, man, we could put stuff on the side to build it and make millions of dollars off of it. Oh, hell yeah. That's what they, that's what they did. You know, so they signed that 10-year deal with Mercedes-Benz. They made, what, $60 million just for putting letters on side the building. And then this deal here doubled that. It was $168 million for, what was it, 10 years? No, 20 years? It's a 20-year deal at 168, which averaged out at 6.9 a year annually. And the Saints get every penny of that money according to a deal that was struck with the state. Uh, the Saints get every penny of that money in which they said they were going to take that money and put it back into the renovations of the dome. By the way, three, four hundred million dollars of your money has already gone into the dome. So what good is your Pitlin seven million is going to make any do? They're already in several uh, modes of renovations and tearing out the facades so they can make even more money and adding more uh, uh, ambient light into it. So it don't cost as much power bill wise and all this kind of stuff and kind of renovating the dome and bringing it up to like uh current and possibly, you know, giving it more of a futuristic or a comfortable feel inside. So, you know, that's three, four hundred million dollars right now. Renovations going on, not hundreds, but millions. So, I mean, they sure know how to spend when they, they, they got their money. And when the money come in, they sure know how to keep it. I mean, it's just it's just. And somewhere, some alternate reality, somewhere, things are what they are supposed to be. In which when you use public funds to build pro uh, the uh, private funds or, you know, public funds to build, uh, well, actually, they're using the public's funds in a private manner or a public manner for private enterprises. That that that's supposed to, that money is supposed to help go back to the people that funded it. That's the, it's, a, it's looked at as an investment to a degree because you're, that's public funds built that structure. And if anybody making money off of it, they should send that money, not the money, just how much it costs to build a structure, but any money coming off that structure back to where it came from. There is no such arrangement for that. And it's not because it, it, it don't exist. Uh, period. It don't exist because we're not pushing it. We're not pushing it. And that, that because we it, it's just like somewhere in another reality somewhere, people don't believe the politicians without making them sign contracts. You know, and then if they violate, they get sued in the court of law as opposed to believing them and and voting for them. And then when they go and stab you in the back, you don't have no recourse. And they tell you it was a campaign promise. Thank you, KT. KT says we could have brought back Kenny Stills. He must have pissed off Peyton royally. Be basically a, a Belichick special and Hogan. What the you know what? I know when we talked about Kenny Stills, he made sense. He wouldn't have cost a lot of money. But Kenny Stills and Coach Peyton had, uh, you know, they had a little ugliness before they left. And uh, and I guess he didn't want him back, you know, so, you know, that's a part of it. But but, but this guy, in my opinion, he's not an impact player in a wide receiver room. He's most mostly a depth piece to fortify if somebody was to get hurt. That's what my, my, my thinking is. Coach Payton's. Real, but you know what? I'm not really mad at Coach Payton for not reaching because I can see he has a lot of confidence in his wide receivers. And I ain't mad at him for that. I'm going to be honest with you. When it come down to the wide receiver room, I'm not I'm not mad at him not going to get to Kenny Stills and stuff like that. Hogan is merely a guy that fortify, you know, the wide receiver room with depth. He's a special team guy. He helped on a special team. But in terms of the wide receiver, Coach Payton looking at guys, Deontay Harris, Marquez Calloway, Traquan Smith, Quan Baker. You know, he wants to see what these guys can do. He's really big. Quan Baker, watch out for Quan Baker. So he's really big on his young wide receivers and think they can help out the team. So let's watch and see if Coach Payton got the right – uh, the right mentality on that. But in terms of, you know, the other stuff, some kind of way down the line in an alternate reality somewhere when billions are, di are divvied out, a million, multi hundreds of millions of dollars are divvied out, is divvied out where the people get it and they're enriched as well because there was their, uh, uh, you know, monies that put that together. You know, so even though most people won't ever mention that, I just think 
That is a, it's a crying shame. It's a no good, underhanded, rotten shame that is like that. You know, it really is. But anyway, big ups to the fam, man. I just think Brandon Brown was a pro bowler in the system, so it's not hard to believe some of the might thrive in a cover three. What's up, Rudy? Big ups to you. All right. Much love to Rudy. Rudy says, uh, Q, I know this is not football related, but I called it. Okay. What, what'd you call, Rudy? What you talking about you called? What you called? He said, I called it. Okay. What did you call, Rudy? Uh, what's up, Patrick? Who that to you, fam? Much love to Patrick Washington. All right. All right. I know Action X Jack. <laughs> Dollar Tree shopping. All right. Uncle Paul said they can use the name rights money to get some better players. <laughs> They're going to use the naming rights money to put it in their pocket, baby. Ain't no, ain't no getting no better player. Bang, uh, what's up, Banger Man? Jay said, who that Q? As long as we get Quine, uh, you know, D will be all right. Yeah, it's not a, a foregone conclusion that they're not going to go after Quine Alexander. It's just the fact that they got uh, Don, what's the man name? I, I don't even know the man name that they signed. Uh, uh, Kendall Donerson. You know, Kendall Donerson. So it doesn't mean that they're not going to reach and get Quine. They just, for whatever reason, felt like they needed to get Donerson for whatever reason. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, that that's a strange one there. When I seen that, I said, wait till I show them this. They're going to like, who the hell is this guy? Like, Jerry, you're a brother. Bust that Samuel Jackson on him. All right. Thank you, Banger Man J9. But appreciate you, bro. Uh, Rudy says the Pelicans have traded. Yeah, I know, Rudy. They traded away the 10th pick to the. It wasn't to the Lakers. It was to the uh, to the Grizzlies. They sent the 10th to the, to the. He said the Pelicans have traded away the 10th pick to the Lakers, but got the 17th. No, you mean the, the Grizzlies. Trading Bledsoe and Adams to Memphis with a future pick. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yep, yep, that goes to Memphis. Yeah, and they did put the Lakers pick in there. So if you put that, Rudy, I don't remember if you say, I'm going to have to go back and look. But, uh, yeah, we're going to cover that on the Pelican Post Game Report tonight. We're going to do a quick show tonight going over that. Uh, That should be in the queue for the family members of Pelican Post Game Report or Pelican Faithful. Uh, The Pelican Post Game Report is a Pelican show stream that we do much like the sports coma. We talk about the Saints stuff. But we talk about the Pelican stuff over there, and it is fun as hell, just like it's fun here. It's just great energy everywhere. All right, what's up, Benny? All right, 504 Code says, we not done at corner. Pool was a depth signing, I believe. How about these Brandon Cooks rumors? I've been hearing that. Yeah, I've been hearing about Brandon Cooks, but do we really think? Remember how Brandon Cooks got up out of here, fam? Could y'all en- enlighten me and remind me, remember how he got up out of here? It was a beef between the same, but Brandon Cooks and Michael Thomas. Actually, Michael Thomas was being backed by the New Orleans Saints. Brandon Cooks wanted to be the number one guy. Saints didn't look like he was one number one guy. Then it was a beef between Cooks and Thomas. You know, that was an issue. So, and then Cooks got a nice size contract. So I don't know about that. You know, so I don't know. You know. It might just be in a realm of just being a rumor. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know, 504 Co. You let me know what you think, bro. All right. Marty said, what happened to McCleskey? He's still on the team. Jalen McCleskey is still on the team. Bobby says, Hogan is known as 7-Eleven because he gets open. But I think he would have fit like a glove with Breeze. Not Hill or Winston. Thank you, Bobby. That's a great point because he was sitting them, the, you know, and, and fine. He's 7-Eleven because – He's a guy nobody don't pay attention to. He, he's a guy that gets in those seams and finds those little holes there, and he catches everything you throw to him. He's a good blocker, too. He just don't have the speed angle to him. So the Saints basically signed a possession guy who plays special teams. He's not a bad special teams guy either. So, yeah, that would have been intriguing because Drew Brees' accuracy would have definitely went well with Chris Hogan. Just like a golden tail. I was like, man, if we can have had golden tape with Drew just that year, man, could you imagine? You know, but you're right on that. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you, Bobby. All right. What's up, Mike? Who that to Mike Larry? What's up, my friend? Appreciate you being here. Ethan, what's up, fam? He says we he said we be back to great value. I know Ethan. <laughs> great value all over the damn place. All right, big ups. All right. Uh big Jedediah said, I can't see my comments on the Pell show. Oh, you said you can't see them, Jedediah? Or somebody oh, okay. I'm gonna go in, when I go over there, I'm gonna check it out, bro. All right, we're gonna I'm gonna check it out. Okay, yeah, I know, Till. I know they're freeing up some money, so we'll see what they're going to do. Up to 36, according to reports and numbers with the Pelicans. So we'll see, man. I Hopefully they bring Ball back and use 
uh, if they want Lowry, may he may he come off the bench to fortify the bench. Hopefully that's a move where he's a six man off the bench. And in certain increments of the game, you've seen Lowry in there with Lonzo moves to two. But Lonzo starts it off at one and then it's in a W there and then or whoever, because they had to give up, uh, you know, some picks. They, and it was a very good. Hey, listen, it's a very good trade, to be honest with you, because they had to give up a few pieces, but they did offload Bledsoe. And uh, and Stephen Adams for a better center, a guy that I kept saying, if you're gonna pay a man that much money, he's he he works cheaper than uh, uh, Stephen Adams, and he he averages more than Stephen Adams. He can hit the three. I mean, this is a good move. So the octopus is working his jelly over there. So we are gonna see how it go. All right. So big ups. Katie says Chad. I know. I know Katie. I don't know if they taking Chad Johnson. He wants to box and didn't he just get knocked the hell out trying to do the celebrity boxing? Somebody might have knocked some screws loose for Chad Johnson. Marty says it's true that Sean putting it out there that Hill will be starting. It's it's reports saying that that Coach Payton favors Taysom Hill going into training camp to be the starter, which does not bother me because that's pressure on Taysom to hold on to the job as opposed to it being Jameis because Taysom was the last man with the job besides Drew. You know, he was the guy, the first guy in when Drew went down. So the thinking, I guess, in Coach Payton's mind is that Taysom starts it off. And if he loses it, he loses it to Jameis in the battle. So in a lot of people, so we'll see how it, how it shakes. That's a different dynamic, too, if that is indeed the case. But I've been hearing that as well. And it's not out of the realm of possibility the way Coach Payton really has that love affair for Taysom Hill. So we'll see. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Marty. Uh, Katie saying Saints calling the Texans about Brandon Cooks. I know, I know, I just don't. That Cooks had he makes a pretty decent money, you know. And of course, with uh, Mike Thomas out for six to nine weeks, and then you have Cooks there, you know, I, I don't know. How about the money angle, you know? Because the Saints could just be doing due diligence, just like the Pelicans are doing. Like you heard all these various trade rumors. The Pelicans talked to the Lakers about this guy, the Pelicans talked to the Kings about this guy, the Saints are talking to people. About this guy. What about that guy? What about this guy? And then it leaks out. Oh, the Saints are interested in this guy. Or oh, they just might have just called him and said, well, what do you want for this guy? What, what, what's the deal? Oh, we want such, such, such. So, okay, hang up. And then somebody will call Adam Schefter to say, you won't believe this. The Saints called Miami about such and such, such and such. And here go your $300 or whatever they paying him. Because he paying them something to give him that information. Here go your three $400. You know, I'm going to cash app you that three four $400 for that piece of information. You know, he's like, that's how Adam Schefter get down. you damn right. Go Google the network of Adam Schefter and you see why he can afford to pay for information. He's an information man. All right, big ups to True Louisiana. What's up, fam? Good to see you. Ty said, don't sleep on Winston's immediate past. I know, bro. I'm with you on that. True Louisiana says, yeah, I seen. They said all he needs is a company car. And a play. Yeah, I think he got his screws knocked out because he just got knocked the hell out in a, in a celebrity boxing ring. That might He might be... <laughs> He still got screws out of there. Brandon Cook would be a good sign. It says, Derek, at uh, the right price, he just need an attitude adjustment. I bet you he knows his place now. Just worried about the concussion situation. Thank you, brother. Derek L., much love, fam. Uh, James says, I'm with you on Steel's Q, but I'm pissed at the same time Steel's flourished in Peyton's system, knows the system is cheap and a great deep threat. Peyton need to put his ego aside for the betterment of the team. I'm telling you, Coach Peyton doesn't feel like he needs guys that can come in and, and help he's really big on those young wide receivers i'm telling y'all a lot of the newspaper people say oh no we in trouble now the sky is falling but i've told people from the jump that the saints are are big on their wide receiver room i said that and mike thomas went down and said well we could use a veteran you know just in case somebody hold it but coach payton really big all this means is that you see you're gonna see more traquan smith marquez calloway deontay harris quine baker Perhaps some of the other guys like Esap or McClas McCleskey, LaJordan Humphrey, these guys step up into the position to fill the void. Coach Payton's big on his wide receiver room. And I love those young wide receivers, to be honest with you. And Coach Payton does too. Hence, that's why Chris Hogan is here and not a Kenny Stills or whatnot. The only question is, is Coach Payton right or is he wrong? You know, I'm just saying. And one of the family members said, Q, what about the tight end position? All that means you're going to be finding them tight ends. This is true. But don't forget the fact that, and listen, family, before we start beating up Peyton, y'all know 
And you got to look and remember the versatility of your depth chart. Remember, if something happened to Michael Thomas, you don't necessarily need to go and get a top flight wide receiver to replace him because you can fill in the wide receiver positions with other players that are not wide receivers. Did you get that? Taysom Hill isn't the guy that can come in and play some of the wide receiver position if he's not playing a quarterback position. Want another one? How about Ty Montgomery, who's going to be, in some cases, your third running back, sometimes your second running back, because you can see times when Elvin Kamara and Ty Montgomery are in there at the same time. Ty Montgomery. So there are people are that are that don't play the wide receiver position that can have production at the wide receiver position. That is the versatility of your offense. So Coach Payton knows this, and he's saying, you know what? We don't need to go out and get somebody to do all this kind of stuff. If we need help, I'll put Taysom up in there, or I'll slide uh, Ty Montgomery in there, and then we'll just keep this whole thing moving. So do y'all remember that as well, how versatile your offense are. So, I mean, Coach Payton's understand this, and that's why I think you ain't seeing Coach Payton uh, really cutting up and say, oh, my God, the sky is falling like some of these media people be doing. They say, oh, my goodness, the sky is falling, Q. Oh, it's going to sky is falling on my head. Listen, don't, don't, don't throw the, the flush the season down the toilet just yet. We ain't even get started yet. But you have an incredible offensive system. A lot of people circulating around anything. Like I said, it's nothing like the Saints offense, man. They'll find some help. But I understand why people kind of pissed about the wide receiver thing, but we'll see if Coach Payton right. I happen to believe that he's right on this one. I ain't gonna lie. Now Cooks is interesting, but what about that money? You think the Saints gonna take that money? He makes a pretty good chunk of change there. I, what is? I know he makes a good chunk of change. I know it's uh, what is it? Ten plus mil? Yeah, not ten mil. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to look up his contract. But I, last time I checked on him, he makes a good chunk of change here, man. Let me look up Brandon Cooks's contract. All right, let me go to my trusty resource. Uh, sporttrack.com and we're going to see about it but yeah I, I I don't know his money he got a, a five year deal at 81 million that he signed with the Rams I think that was that gave him that contract hold on let me see and then they traded him to the Texans and right now he's in the he got two years left this year oh yeah I don't know about that this year according to sport track he makes he makes actually 2.5 million this year for his contract, which is agreeable, but then it jumps to like 12 million next year. And it's not an opt out in there. So the Saints, if they won't get from up under that, what is the dead money on that? Let me see. Six million. The cap hit will be 15 million. I don't think the Saints go for that. I don't think they go. I just looked up his contract. Let me show y'all, man. Hold on for a second. Let me get it on the screen. Let me get uh, receipts on screen for the family members. Because in most of these rumors, and sometimes it could be them just asking about it. But if you take a look at it, and this is Brandon Cooks, 27 years old, seven-year pro. Now, if you scroll down, you can see his contract right here. He signed a five-year deal at $81 million with the Rams, right? Now, if you go on down here, you'll see that he has two years remaining on his contract. And this is where you pick up if you were to trade for him. Okay, so you're 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 past this opt out right here, and it's at two point five. But look at this, twelve million, and then if you put them in the street, it's fifteen million cap hit. You think they're gonna do that with six point five on the dead on with the dead cap? So I mean, that's why I said the money. I don't think it works. Now, of course, they can restructure him, but that's what two point five on the restructure. I mean, it traps you into that $12 million, man. I don't know if they go for that. The Saints are trying to shed cap as opposed to take it on. That's why I go over the numbers and say to myself, well, I hear the rumors, but the numbers don't make any sense. You know, so y'all y'all do with that. Uh, I just gave you the numbers. Y'all tell me what y'all think on that. All right. Uh, big ups to the fam. Uh, what's up, VB Saints and Pals lady? Much, up, much love, baby. Much love to the Queens, man. All right, Wallace. What's up, brother Wallace? Who that to you, fam? Appreciate you being here, man. All right, hit the like button, family. Uh, Action Jackson says trade up for Gal. Oh, yeah. I, now, see, if anybody, man, is two guys I would love the Saints to get. Michael Gallup would be another. I was looking at Michael Gallup. I was like, man, Michael Gallup would be special. 
in a Saints wide receiver room. I don't think Coach Payton reaches and get him. Another guy I would love would be Hakeem Hicks. That's right, big Hakeem Hicks, which we got rid of, and he went to Chicago and balled out. I would love to get him back because he's there's a disgruntlement going on with him. I would love to get big Akeem Hicks back here and pair him with David on Yamada and call them the Canadian connection. Do you not understand how fierce the Saints defense would be with Akeem Hicks and David on Yamada together in the interior of the defensive line? You talking scary stuff there, boy. You talking some scary stuff. But Gallup, I love Gallup's game, man. I think he fits well with the Saints. I just don't think the Saints go after them. Coach Payton loves his wide receivers, man. I don't think he's looking to improve or make trades to get any of these other guys. So it would be in there. But action, I, I mean, man, listen, I, I, I like, I love Michael Gallup's game, man. I really do. Who that to you, Darian? Big ups to Darian Bonds. Who that to you, fam? Clint, what's up, bro? Clint F in the building as well. Mike says, uh, Jameis, go stretch the field. He has the arm strength to make our offense more dangerous. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. Aya Busa says, I love Gallup in New Orleans. Same draft ca- class, same round as Trey Quine. I love, I mean, I love Michael Gallup's game. I love his game, man. And I do, I agree with you on that higher boost. I think he would be absolutely awesome in the Saints offense, in the vertical Saints offense. I just don't think the Sean, uh, Coach Payton reaches for him. I think Coach Payton loves what he has. We'll see. All right. Uh, uh, well, let's see. Jeffrey says, uh, Jeffrey Johnson, who that to you? said, we're going to be uh, good regardless because Payton is that good of a coach, but it's a reason we only have one Super Bowl. We're a good team, but when the playoffs come, we need to be great. And we haven't been. Well said, Jeffrey. I've been beating that for a while, my friend. I appreciate you dropping that knowledge. We got to agree a hundred, a thousand, a million percent with you on that, my friend. I really do. I think that that's been the problem, that we've been good, but we haven't been great when it counted. And as good as we've been over the last 10 some odd years, we should have a minimum of at least two Super Bowls in which one of them, some family members said we was cheated out of one of them. And Coach Payton's supposed to like, nah, ain't none of that. The guy made a bad call. But listen, he said we had several opportunities to win that game. Remember, uh, what's his face? Who's a tight end for the uh, Carolina Panthers now? Dropped the touchdown pass. He had several uh, plays where Coach Payton said that he was too conservative when uh, the, what was the Rams coach name? I forgot the man name. McVay. When McVay was going for it on fourth down, doing all this other stuff, and he said he played it too conservative. And he shouldn't have done that. So Coach Payton will, took his lumps on that. He, he took his lumps. But when we get in the plus, we over-relied on Drew to a fault, in my opinion, from watching all these stuff. We should have had more of the running attack, and I think that would have helped out. And that was the biggest, the major focal point. Adding the powerful running attack more so in these playoff games helps us out. Helps gobble up the clock and steal possessions away from our opposition. And I think when you put that ball in the air a lot, you you kind of – kind of I the opportunity for it being picked. And I thought we needed to rely more on that running attack more so than we did throwing that ball, you know? So, I mean, hopefully things change. I think they do to a degree. I appreciate you, Jeffrey, for saying that. All right, VB Pels, uh, Saints Pell, they say it was evident to us, but not to Sean because he let him keep playing in Denver and in Philly. Okay, she's talking about uh, Taysom. DLP, what's up, DLP? He says pool signing was only... He said it was only 160000 against the cap. There is no money for a potential starter. His contract is 990000 Saint Same sign and veterans now has a lower impact on the cap. So allow them more room to move. Thank you, DLP. Appreciate you, fam, for dropping that knowledge. They are eating up. They're not ca- counting that much against the cap, but they are eating up roster spots. And we had five, and now with the signing of these three, we mean we got two left if my, if my count is right. So we'll see. All right, thank you for that uh, DLP. All right, and let me keep, what's up, Reggie? Reggie said, I really hope Jameis Winston starts as our quarterback, and I believe Davenport will have a breakout year. Thank you, Reggie. Reggie George, who that to you, fam? Appreciate you. Hit the like button, fam. And all the family members that are not subscribed, but hit the subscribe button and join the great Saint Thank Tank, fam. Jeffrey says, at some point, we have to get these Super Bowl, these superstar players that they get us over the hump in the playoffs because we're good enough in the regular season, but we need special players that get us over the hump. I mean, listen, playing as a team has gotten the Saints far. And we've taken players that were good and turned them into superstars here. Drew Brees was, you know, got benched in San Diego, came here, was became a, a superstar Hall of Famer. Um, you had guys like Michael, uh, like Marcus Colston, seven round draft pick, almost missed the irrelevant. Became the best wide receiver Saints ever know, took all the wide receiver records down. 
the black and gold represent the true underdog. And that's why guys come here and they excel. They got an opportunity. And a lot of times you got a team that's competitive because a lot of these guys are playing with chips on their shoulders, which gives them an extra edge because they weren't even selected or drafted. But the Saints gave them an opportunity. So they're about proving themselves. Plus, you, you couple that with the fact that you have a really great family and environment, a great mental and spiritual environment and a culture of winning. And of course, when you add all that together, that's a great mix of talent. That's a great mix of everything that just propel you to another level. But we have to get when you play in playoff football, you got you cannot make that many mistakes. You don't have to be perfect. But remember, the people, the person or the team that's in the playoffs that makes the most mistakes more than likely will lose. So you have to be able to eliminate the mistakes and execute. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to have a mentality of domination. We have to go in there and dominate everybody and know that we are better than everybody there. If you go in there not with that mentality, you're going to lose. And I think a lot of that was a, po- a problem with us in the playoffs. You know, we have to have the right mentality because you think about the way we lost to the Minnesota Vikings a couple of years ago, not the Minnesota Miracle, but the one we lost to Kirk Cousins, who has a history of falling apart in key games. And he was up in there looking like Joe Montana. You know, I'm like, what the hell is this? Why did they was like they didn't show up to play? They looked at lethargic. They really didn't start getting off off their ass until the last six or seven minutes of the game. The play calling was suspect. Uh, the, the people was getting dominated on the offensive line. The, you know, all this stuff was going. We couldn't get no pressure on the quarterback. It just, it just, it culminates. We got to have a will to dominate. And just because we have players or people that's injured, is no excuse. You have to be able to build a depth and still be able to keep the pressure on to win games. That's what depth charts are about. We got to fulfill them the right way. So the underdogs, and I understand the star players, and the Saints have enough star players to carry them over, in my opinion. But we got to play as a team, and we got to minimize the the, uh, mistakes and execute. You know what I'm saying, fam? Thank you. All right, Brother Gerard. What's up, Brother Gerard? Who that to you, fam? Good to see you in there. McVay, there you go. He says, Breeze messed up the game. Yeah, I know, fam. I mean, it wasn't just Drew. It was several other people that just didn't come to play. You got to throw Jared Cook in there as well. And, uh, you know, we it was just pathetic, man. We just have to eliminate the mistakes. We got. I want us to rely more so a little bit more, a lot more on the running attack. I think we are a very dominant running team. We showed last year. But I've been saying it for years. I've been saying it for years. Y'all know I've been saying it. I made goddamn T-shirts and models about it. First, two rushes, first down, all this kind of stuff. You go to the pro shop, you see several shirts in there about running the ball. Hey, coach, run the damn ball, all this kind of stuff. For years, I've been beating the block to run the game, be a, the, the Saints to run that ball. And this year, I thank Coach Payton to give us that. Last year, he gave that gave us that a lot. Last year, when you've seen several plus games, a 200-yard rushing performance, the Saints averaged 141 yards per contest last year, just dominating teams, running all over the top of their heads. We would have beat Green Bay and we would have beat uh, the Raiders if we would have kept running the ball. You know, so, you know, it's we defeat ourselves. It's not like somebody beating the shit out the Saints every time they play. If you notice, we let up off the pedal. We had Tampa Bay beating that t- in that game and we took our foot off the pedal to allow Tampa Bay to get back in the game by turning the ball over four times. You're not going to win no playoff games turning the ball over full time. So usually when we lose is because we are not executing and we taking the foot off the, off the pedal and giving up the other team an opportunity to win the game. You know, and, and by either we having a bad play calling game or we're not executing properly and it gives the team an opportunity to win. In that Tampa Bay game, y'all know we was up by 10. There was no reason for us to have let the, uh, took our foot up off that pedal and let Tampa Bay win that game in the dome. Everything was going up, and then all of a sudden it flip-flopped on his head with the turnovers. So, you know, we we got to cut that out. All right, appreciate you, fam. All right, BK, okay, much love to the fam. All right, Clint said the last playoff game, the Saints weren't there. I, I know, fam. It's just you can't do that. You can't do that. You got to execute, and you can't make no – you can't make a lot of mistakes in playoff games because – it's the finality of it. And people come prepared for the playoffs, you know, and that's what it is. We just been sloppy football in the playoffs when it really count. Besides the Chicago game, which Chicago wasn't going to win that game. Y'all know and I know Chicago didn't work. That guy, they were dropping touchdown passes in that game. They were, you know, it was just ridiculous, man. That Chicago game, the people wasn't about winning no game. We just, they basically wrapped the game up in a big, beautiful Christmas present and handed it to you say, here you go. You know, there wasn't nothing. The, the, the Chicago Bears matchup, that wasn't nothing. That wasn't, 
much of a game. Y'all know it and I know it. You know, Chicago wasn't competitive. You know, but we have to be able to, when we got the lead, we got we to gotta push on and we got to, we can't make these mistakes. We got to be smarter, you know? Jeffrey says, also in the playoffs, we have the worst luck. If it wasn't for bad, <laughs> we had no luck at all. Reggie says, we have the best running back in it. I, I agree with you, Reggie. I agree. Rugaru, what's up, fam? Say, hey, Q, don't you think that the safety is going to be in the box every, do you think that safety is going to be in the box every down? The bo You're talking about... Uh, uh, who you referring to? You're talking about uh, uh, Malcolm Jenkins being in the box every down, or who would you? Okay, I, I want. Uh, <laughs> it's at the it's at the pro shop. Action Jackson. They got one. They got one. Uh, a shirt with me slap. It's called the Dat Slap. It's a Dat Slap shirt. I I had designed by one of our designers with me slapping the piss out of a referee, slapping all of his headphones off the top of his head. It's called Stop Cheating Us. I'm yelling in the shirt. Stop cheating. I'm slapping it. It's, it's at the pro shop. It's called the Dat Slap. It's one of our most popular shirts, man. It's pretty funny. I slapped him so all the damn, all his headset flew off. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right. Sergeant. Oh, what's up there? What's up, Sergeant King? That's who that, that's uh, KK504 and 404. Lady, what's up, baby? Who that tell you? All right, fam. Listen, Marco says, BQ, what do you think about Rogers' one-year deal with the Packers? Do you think he will come to the same? He still got years left on his contract, bro. I looked up his contract on a, a couple shows ago and seen Aaron Rodgers still have multiple years on his contract. I mean, you know, I think he just wants from under Green Bay, but Green Bay is not willing to get rid of him. And I said that. Remember, I said that when it's before all of this stuff jumped off. I said that. And I was like, he's not going to come back to that team because he don't believe in the general manager. He don't believe in the coach. They try to replace him. You know, and it wasn't like he was under the hit over the hero. Excuse me. He was still productive. He took him and he's like, listen, let's go all in this year. Give me some help and we can. I can take y'all there. He gets one game within the Super Bowl. He's pissed about that. He's pissed about that and he don't trust the man. So he can opt to retire. But Green Bay, if they smart and they see Aaron Rodgers is not coming back, look, man, just trade Aaron Rodgers. And I don't understand what it is about these general managers. You screwed it up. The only thing you can do now is trade the man, get something for him, trade him to the AFC, and that's the thing. They'll never trade him in the NFC to the Saints. If Aaron Rodgers comes to you, it'll be after his contract is over with or, or something like that. They, they're not going to trade Aaron Rodgers to the Saints. Green Bay is not going to do that. He'll tell you he, they're not going to do that. They're absolutely not going to do that. So, you know, if he comes, he's going to have to come as a free agent. He still have years left on his contract. But they need to just go ahead and trade the man. Get rid of the man. The man don't want to play for you. Stop holding on to the man. Trade the man and get something for him and move on with the guy that you drafted. You drafted this quarterback. Go ahead on and start him and get and move this other guy up out of here. I just don't understand him, man, with that bull crap. Get him on out of there. He don't want to be there. He's telling you he's not going to be at camp. What, you going to force him to play? Trade him and get rid of him. Get something for him and move on to the next man. Bottom line. That's how you do it. Move him on out of there. Kimberly says most of the signing depth purposes and doesn't let me hold on there. Oh, thank you, Dodd. I appreciate you. He said, I wonder, are we over uh, overlooking Keith Washington a little too much? Uh him. Okay, all right. I see what the uh what you were saying, fam. Early on, one of the family members asked about Keith Washington. Yeah, that's uh, well, yeah, Dodd, that's straight. First of all, thank you for your super chat. And uh, he says, uh, Keith Washington a little too much, and Adebo could play number two cornerback in different packages. And Chauncey Garden may play more linebacker, that modified nickel position. I get you, daughter. Thank you for your super chat, bro. Yeah, Keith, now I've said that about Keith Washington. Fam, uh, you're right on that. And one of the family members asked me about that early on in the show, about Keith Washington. Yeah, I, I'm big on Keith Washington, too. I like Keith Washington. A lot of thought he was doing really well last year when he was getting an interception a day. Remember that in training camp? And then he had the injuries, and then he had the C-19 stuff happen to him, and then they shut him down for the entire season. Then, But I really like him. I think he has the size. He's six foot one. He's scrappy. He looks for the ball. He's intelligent. I think he's going to be one of a really good uh, cornerbacks there for the Saints in the future. Uh, like I said, Coach Rashard, we'll see. I think Keith Washington is intriguing, man. He really is, bro. I really do. He's the type of cornerback we like a lot. He's smart, and nobody's really talking about him. But he, we got a lot of veteran guys. We got Patrick Robinson and guys like that. We want and Ken Ken Crawley. We looking for these young cornerbacks to push them old guys up off of here, man. Get them on the out of here. With Poole signing, you know, maybe that mean that's the that could be the end of the line for Patrick Robinson. If they sign 
a slot cornerback, Patrick Robinson could be gone, man. They ain't going to keep that guy as a fifth down back. Uh, I mean, as a fifth cornerback on the Saints team making $2 million. Absolutely not. They're not going to keep him. They signed that guy. That's the end of, of, of Patrick Robinson, in my opinion. But yeah, I'm really big on Keith Washington. And you might, and, and you could, you absolutely right on that, Dada. We definitely, as a squad, are overlooking him. He has some serious potential. All right. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go over a few, then we're going to go. All right. All right. Gabriel says, uh, Gabriel says, uh, uh, I'm Brazilian and I was studying about the history of the Saints, about owners and heirs. What can happen after Gail Benson here in football is different from the NBA and NFL. I would like to understand if reader from what I saw can jeopardize the future of the team and also enter in this question with the age of Peyton and Loomis that may be concerns about the future of our Saints. Thank you, Gabriel, uh, for your question. Very good questions. Uh, I don't think uh, Rita is having it's going to be an issue with Gail. Gail, they don't have all that didn't been hashed out in court already. It's Gail's team already. Uh, and she settled with uh, Rita LeBlanc, who was uh, Tom Benson's, uh, I want to say, his uh, his daughter through marriage, who was originally the person until Gail stepped on the scene. And there was a clash between Gail and Rita, very uh, a public clash. It wasn't nothing secretive. They knew that those two didn't like each other. Rita accused a Gail of not giving Tom Benson her meds, give, I mean his meds, and giving him candy and wine. You know, not taking care of him. They accused her of that. And Gail did, you know, responded and said that it wasn't true. And they went to court and there was a settlement made where Rita got her got what she got and Gail got what she got. So I don't think from a legal standpoint that Rita will have anything to do with Gail and jeopardize her uh, ownership as a team. As far as Coach Payton, Coach Payton has what a couple of years left on his contract. I'm not, I know not, I don't really know how many years Loomis has, but I think it's a little, maybe a year or so past him. But I'm, I think Loomis will be with the Saints as long as they have him. He got a position for life as long as he's competent enough, and he keeps bringing up guys like Kai Harley and educating them with find, knowing finding guys like that to educate and assist him with what he's doing. He can he will sit there for a while, and it's the same with Coach Payton. Coach Payton could be the Saints. Uh, coach for as long as he wants the job. As long as he's winning, uh, he will have the job of the Saints. So I don't think Coach Payton goes nowhere yet as long, because it's it's hard for a coach to say, okay, I'm going to leave the Saints. Well, he has everything. He has a uh, full control over the team. He ha he doesn't have a general manager or a VP that meddles in his affairs. Whatever he asks for, he gets from Mickey. Mickey it has all total faith in him. The franchise totally love. It's hard for Coach Payton to say, you know what? I'm going to leave all of that and go up to the Giants, per se. You know what I'm saying? And become the Giants unless uh, the only way I see Coach Payton moving on or intrigued at something is if he can be the coach general manager. And if some team offered him that, you might have a uh, – you might see him leave to pursue something like that. But if it ain't nothing like that, I don't think Coach Payton goes anywhere. I think he stays as long as he wants. As long as he's winning – Football games for the black and gold, I don't think Coach Payton's going nowhere. Every now and again, he flutters and have these issues, but then he knows, like last year when he was having issues, winning those games, barely was barely beating teams by three points the first, what, four or five weeks? And we was like, man, what's going on? Why are you trying to force feed the pass? Coach Payton run the ball. Then they kicked in with the Detroit game, remember that? And he started running the ball because people was yelling, run the ball. He knows when to turn that on. I'm telling you, he knows when you, you, you he, Coach Payton been here for too long not to feel the heat from the black and gold nation. He knows how serious we are about football. So he'll experiment to a degree. But when the heat's on, he start, he'll start running that ball. Y'all know that and I know that. Remember last year? Same thing. So he got, he, you might think he not listening, but he listens. He hears all of this, man. Matter of fact, I hear people when it was giving them the sports comb and heard them say, Q, he don't like what you be saying about him not running the ball. And I told him, I said, I don't give a damn if you like it or not. Run the damn ball. You know, if you're if you upset about it, you know it's the truth. You won't get upset about something that's not the truth. Now, come on with me. Come on now. But, that, but I'm just saying, listen, I want you to win. That's all I'm saying. I want us to win. I want us to win, coach. That's all I'm saying. I want us to win. I don't want us to be trifling and losing to teams that we should be beating. You know? Run the ball. And Coach Payton started running that damn ball, didn't he? He ran the ball so much last year, he broke franchise records and attempts, yards, and touchdowns. He was running the hell out that ball last year. I'm telling you. He he got the – you think they don't listen. Man, let me tell you something. 
you people who think them guys ain't listening to you when you fund everything, man, listen, they got their ear to the street. I'm telling you, they listen to you. They got to because they don't go, okay, we think they're going to do this. So we're going to give them that. No, they, what they do is they actuary everything out. They go and get public opinion and find out which direction they want to go with this here thing. It's a whole little testing metric that they use to see what the public like because they don't want to waste money doing something that you ain't going to pay for. They know it. So they got to listen to you, especially if you know what you're talking about. You know, but you got to call it like it is. You can't be too aggregatory toward, toward them because you don't want to let them get fat and lazy on you. And, you know, because you get used to winning, you got to be able to push them to challenge for Super Bowls. You know what I'm saying? We can't just be like happy with just winning, the, winning 10 or 12 games in the NFC South crown. We got to push them and say, listen, that's cool, but we want Super Bowls. Remember, we're playing for Super Bowls here, not just the stack power wins. Winning is fine. But it's not the only thing. Remember, we winning to get to Super Bowls. We want Super Bowls here. The family wants Super Bowls. We only got one. We've been top offense for many years. We've been kicking ass all over the place. Full straight division, uh, NFC South crowns with no Super Bowls. We want Super Bowls and the family members want Super Bowls. You got to give them that. You can't fault them on that because they want they because we play what we plan for. We ain't playing for NFC South crowns. That's only one part of it. We want the Super Bowls, you know? Y'all know it. Y'all know it. Y'all want the Super Bowls. Y'all know it. Y'all just like me. All right. The Rams said, hey, Q Taser better watch out for Ian Book this year. We'll see. We'll see how it all goes, fam. But Ian Book, a lot of people talking good stuff about him, too. Marty Falk says, talk like two or three years ago, Dallas was trying to get him back. Okay. Y'all yeah, know. I, I remember that, bro. I remember that. Rams said, hey, Q. Uh, okay. I think. Thank you, Rams. Trey Joseph. What's up, fam? I know we, I know we are, I mean, that because the family members want Super Bowls. It's not a disrespect when you tell the coach of the, 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 of the Saints to run the Super Bowl, to run the, to run the ball. It's not. You know, y'all know it. And like last year, they ran the hell out the ball. And I was like, if you'd have done that in the playoffs, we'd have got a little further. But it's a learning process because you got a coach. And I know my coach. I know my coach got a pass and addiction. I know that. I know that. You can't tell me he doesn't. But last year showed me that, man, listen, it's, it, he don't have Drew to over rely on anymore. You know, he don't. So what does that mean? What does it mean that he ran the ball last year? I think that'll be a big part of Coach Payton's game. So we'll see how it all goes. All right. So let's keep it going here, man. Uh, big ups to the rest of the family. What's up, Adrian? Who that to your brother? Pat Rich, who that to your fam? As well, much love to the family members. Brother Robert Clark, who that to you says, should they get free agent wide receiver to compliment Jamie? I don't think, I think the Saints is fine, bro. I'm going to just keep it real with you. I think, I think the Saints is fine with, I'm, I'm, I'm with Coach Payton on this one, fam. I, I be, I've been telling y'all about the wide receivers. I'm big on the wide receivers. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I think we're going to be fine with the wide receivers. I, I've been saying that. I think we got some players there. And people that don't, these guys don't have much of a name, so people are a little nervous. But well, remember, Mike Thomas ain't have no big name when he came down here. Elvin Kamara ain't have no. All they took was an opportunity to show you what they can do. Let's see what these young guys can do. Let's see what they can do. And if it don't work out, then we can still reach out there and go get somebody. So it's not the end of the road. But I'm with Coach Payton on this one. I like, I really like them wide receivers, them young wide receivers. I really do. I think some people, Trey Quan, Deontay, Marquez, Quan Baker, LaJordan Humphreys, I, I love them wide them young wide receivers, man. This is the best young wide receiver group that we've had in a very long time. Now, Mike is missing, but that just means that somebody got to step up, you know, so we'll see. And if it don't work out, we can reach in there and go get somebody. But I'm really big on these wide receivers. I'm keeping it real. All right. All right. I know, I know, Kev. <laughs> yeah, they had a little glitch in there. All right. Hey, Q, what do you think about looking at Elshon? No, sir. No, Ramsey. Absolutely not. Elshon Jeffries. Hell to the no, no, no. No, 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 hell no to Elshon Jeffries. Thank you for the question, though. <laughs> Inevitable. Says, yo, Q, who's the best team you ever seen in any year you've been watching in the NFL? The best team ever in the NFL that I've watched play. The best team means complete team. Man. But so obviously, you know, I'm biased to my black and gold, but outside the black and gold, Man, the best, most complete teams that I've seen play. What was the San Francisco 49er club that had, uh, that had, uh, what, what team was that with, with Steve Young? What year was that? The mid-90s when uh, Steve Young was running them and they had 
all of all those Jerry Rice and John, I mean, all those weapons and then Brent Jones and then the defense was like Dexter Manley, Charles or Charles Mann, Ricky Jackson, Dana Stubblefield, uh, Eric Davis, Deion Sanders, Tim McDonald, Merton Hanks. I mean, that 49er club, man, that won the Super Bowl against the, uh, the Chargers with Junior Seau, rest in peace. That was a that was a really damn that was a bad team now. Yeah. And of course, somebody mentioned the old two Ravens defensively speaking with the running game. They were pretty bad. They didn't have much on the offense passing game wise, but they could run the hell out the ball and knock you out of here with the defense. So they've been quite a couple of few that that fought one of them 49er teams that I've seen pretty bad. They were they were tough to stop. I mean, if I think about it long enough, I can probably come up with a few more. But that's the first thing that come to mind. Besides, obvious, our Saints clubs have been pretty, uh, pretty rough to deal with as well. I have to think about that one, man. But that's a few of them. That's a few of them out there. Uh, uh, ninety five. Thank you, no Saint. And who that to you, fam? What's up, Scoob? Who that to you, Scoob? Good to see you in the chat, fam. Much love. All right, Matthew said I've been hearing stuff like the Saints might bring back. Yeah, I've been seeing that, bro. We covered that. I don't know how true that is, bro. He makes two million this year. But it spikes to 12 million next year, no opt out, and then you got to eat a crap load of cap. We just covered that. Uh, t- if he makes 2.5 this year, and then 2022 it jumps 2 million, uh, 10 million to 12 million flat, and then of course you have uh, a 15.5 million dollar cap hit and 6.5 on the dead cap. So I don't know about Brandon Cooks uh, coming back from a monetary standpoint. So. I mean, they might have just inquired about him. Who knows, bro? Only time to tell. What it do, pimping? What's up, Scoob? What's up to my dog, Scoob? Appreciate you being here, bro. All right. All right, 92. All right. Thank you, John. I appreciate you. 90. Okay, I got you. Appreciate y'all. Y'all smart. That's the great thing. Thank tank, fam. All right. So with that being said, fam, I'm going to ch- check out on that. I appreciate y'all chiming in on this installment of the Pel- uh, oh, I'm about to say the Pelican Post Game Report. That's what I'm about to jump over to. But on this edition of the Sports Comb, I appreciate you guys as we recapped and covered the Chris uh, uh, Hogan signing. Of course, the Saints signed a linebacker. It's not Quine Baker. It's Mr. Kendall Donerson. We covered that early in the show. If you didn't know that, we you go check that out. We also went a little bit more into the Keith, uh, the Keith Poole. I keep thinking Keith Poole. Y'all know who Keith Poole is. Brian Poole. You know, the Brian Poole. We had Keith Poole. You remember him? Brian Poole signing at the cornerback position. We went into that as well as several other topics. So with that being said, I'm going to check out on that. Please, family, feel free. If you had not already hit, hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please feel free to hit the hell out the subscribe button and join the great Saint Think Tank. Uh, also, if you like the stream, feel free to share it in your social media. Share it, uh, you know, wherever you socialize. Well, the great Saint Faithful. Also, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network. Or you can uh, become a YouTube member to get access to our lock content because we got a bunch of lock shows that we did uh, that's on the Patreon and as a YouTube membership that you get access to, like 60 plus shows plus the ONQ with Big Q News show that I've been working on. Uh, what's up, Latrill? Big ups to you, fam. I see you there, bro. Uh, big ups to Latrill uh, as well. So if you want information on that, please feel free to go in the, the comment section. I mean, not the comment, description section below. And look that stuff up, and they have links down that as well. And I'm about to go ahead on and jump over to the Pelican Post Game Report momentarily, and we're gonna cover the latest news on the Pelicans. So if you're a member, if you love the Pelicans, you're a Pelicans person, you're Pelicans faithful, subscribe to the Pelican Post Game Report. Thank you, Jim Kev. Got the link right there, so you don't even have to look. Jim Kev put the link right there, so you just click that, go over there, and we're gonna be doing the show covering the, the Pelicans' latest trade. Uh, situation they got going on. It's going to be fun. So with that being said, I appreciate you. Much love to the great Saint Thank Tank family members. For those Patreon family members and YouTube members, uh, members, I will see you guys tomorrow on TSC Q&A Live, our Patreon show. And for the rest of the family members, I'll see y'all later. Do that to you and I'm out. Yeah. Well, all right. Like you always say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Number one sports talking deep. Uh, we ain't like the Falcons, we won't blow the lead. Look, all we talk is who that? Uh, who got cut and who back? Uh, Rookies in the vets, uh, players you should look at. Yeah. It's the sports coma, you don't wanna miss it. 
Got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics Catch a visit from Sway, maybe DC or fly It's the hottest thing smoking, big Q in the guys Go to YouTube and live, make sure you subscribe In the views inside the Saints locker room high Talk to Drew, Jordan, Zach, Peyton New Orleans, who that nation Best believe when I say we be gold and black Ain't a miracle or robbery could ever hold us back No Quake, Bounty Gate, let the truth be told. List the sports coma. All we know is say Super Bowl. Yeah. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Daily.com. That's right, the Who That Daily.com. Your one stop mm. shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, mm. even the top flight boxing. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay mm. up on your team, the Who That Daily.com is your site. The Who That Daily.com for the sport Who That in all of us.